Hi, my name is Jason Pierce and I'm the president of StellarNet Spectrometers. And in this video, we're going to discuss some of the differences between Raman and near-infrared spectroscopy. Now, I'm not going to give you all the technical information of how Raman uses a laser beam to measure the scattered light from the vibrational modes of a sample, or how near-infrared measures the absorbance of those same vibrational modes, or how Raman requires a change in polarizability, and near-infrared requires a change in dipole moment. If you want to know that, read our white paper, Fundamentals of Raman Spectroscopy. I'll put the link below. Rather, in this video, we're going to discuss the practical applications of both Raman and near-infrared so you, the customer, can know which type of technology is right for your application. To start, Raman spectroscopy and near-infrared spectroscopy are complementary techniques. That means they, they both have their own advantages and disadvantages. Um, so any analytical laboratory would definitely be better off having both of the techniques and not just one. That might not be possible and you may have to choose which system is right for you or best for you. And in that case, there are a couple of main ideas uh, and suggestions that you should follow. First things first is if you need to measure aqueous samples or measure things that have a lot of water in them, you can't use near-infrared. Near-infrared has large water absorbances that prohibit anything with water inside of it uh, not to be able to be measured. Um, so Raman would be your uh, instrument of choice if you have aqueous or so, uh, samples with lots of water in them. The second is near-infrared excels by measuring large surface areas. You typically take a white halogen broadband light and you reflect it off the bottom of your sample. In this case, in our stellar case near-infrared system, we're measuring about an inch uh, diameter on the bottom. You can use a Petri dish, you can use the sample in a bag, um, but you, you measure larger surface area. Um, additionally, in our stellar case near-infrared, we use 3D optical uh, technology, which means we're measuring the sample from three different geometrical locations, which means your sample doesn't have to spin. This is great for inhomogeneous samples uh, and samples that have a lot of diversity inside. Raman, on the other hand, uh, uses a laser beam and targets a sample and you're measuring a small spot. So in the case that you have a sample that has a lot of different things inside and you want to get the best representation of the sample as a whole, you want near-infrared. Another important factor to consider is portability. Both our Stellar Case near-infrared and our Stellar RAM handheld analyzers are portable, but our Stellar RAM analyzers are handheld. We have both the 785 model and the slightly larger 1064 nanometer model. Uh, these guys can go into your production facility, they can go into your quality control or your incoming inspection, or into your lab, or into your pocket. Um, so if portability is a deal for you, the uh, Stellar RAM handheld analyzers definitely take the prize. Another benefit for Raman spectroscopy is specificity. In a Raman spectrum, uh, you have sharp finger-like emission peaks, which are representative of a molecule. When you have mixtures of molecules, you can easily identify each molecule by its sharp emission lines. This means you don't have to have all of the samples and all of the mixtures of samples in your uh, library database in order to get spectral matches. Alternatively, near-infrared spectra is characterized by broad reflectance bands of the vibrational overtones of your molecules. These vibrational bands are great for quantifying samples. Near-infrared spectroscopy typically is great for chemometrics and quantitative analysis. Another benefit of Raman spectroscopy is its ability to do SIRS surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy and this enables you to measure very small trace amounts of a sample. 
Another known challenge with Raman spectroscopy is fluorescence. Fluorescence occurs when you illuminate your sample with the Raman laser and you cause an excited state of your molecule that emits light in all directions, typically swamping the detector so you can't read your fingerprint. Now for the million dollar question. Which samples fluoresce and which samples don't fluoresce and how do you know? Well, you can start by going to our Stellarnet.us website, go to the Stellar RAM page. Under libraries, you'll see a bunch of different library databases that are included on the Stellar RAM. Uh, we have databases for hazardous materials, narcotics, explosives, pharmaceuticals, chemicals, food additives, minerals, and a variety of others. So uh, if you're curious as to whether your sample may fluoresce, feel free to go and look through our database to see if you can find your specific chemicals. Uh, typically, the rule of thumb is if you have uh, organic materials or impurities, um, they will tend to cause a lot more fluorescence than others. Also, colored samples typically uh, tend to fluoresce more than others as well. Um, Fluorescence also occurs when you have higher power lasers. So for example, a 405 nanometer UV system will cause more fluorescence than a 532 green or a 785 red, which fluoresces sometimes. And that's why we have a 1064 nanometer near infrared Raman system. This near infrared laser actually reduces fluorescence and allows you to measure a lot more samples. So, um, but there are some drawbacks for the 1064 nanometer Raman. Uh, specifically, we have to use a near infrared detector. Uh, those are more expensive and they require thermoelectric cooling, which requires a larger package, more power consumption, and, and also you have to wait longer because you're using a weaker laser. So if you have samples that do fluoresce, you're going to want to either try a 1064 nanometer Raman system or the near infrared system, which also works for uh, fluorescent samples. Uh, I'm going to do a quick example for you of a common application where uh, both Raman spectrum, uh, both Raman and near infrared spectroscopy will work. Uh, that is a nutraceutical application. Um, but there are a variety of different nutraceuticals which are made of organic substances, uh, ground leaves, uh, and they aren't necessarily pure extracts. Those may cause fluorescence and um, might not be good for Raman 785. So uh, here's a quick demo of, of uh, some nutraceuticals that work with the 785 uh, and then also the, uh, some that don't work with the 785 and we're going to show you that the near infrared system uh, and the 1064 Raman are going to work in both cases.